Hey, Charizard for the win here. Let's talk about something important, which is the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that came out, uh, I don't know, like almost a month ago, I guess. Anyways, there's a new one. Um, and, uh, okay, so I thought this movie was going to be, like, darker and grittier and stuff, but it's not at all. It's actually pretty uh, light tone. It it's kind of silly at times, but that's okay because it actually did a really good job with that. Um, I don't want to get into the movie too much. I don't want to talk for too long, but let's just talk about some of the things that they did with this one. So, um, the origin in this one, it was different than the origin in the usual movie. Uh, usually they do the one generally from the comics or at least from the TV show, which is pretty much the same, um, where they were... It, which basically just involves Kamana Yoshi um, in some way, and that's how they got trained and stuff. But in this one, they took the origin from a newer uh, reboot of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics, which I read a little bit of. Um, the first, like, section of it is called Change is Constant, and that involves Baxter Stockman um, working through working on this mutagen and experimenting on these turtles that he has, uh, where April is his assistant, and she names them and blah, blah, blah. So they basically took that idea into this movie. The only difference with that being that the uh, scientist guy played by um, Michael... F no, is it Michael Fishner? No, it's something Fishner. I don't know. That guy who's the kind of scientist, he's basically the villain of this one, isn't Baxter Stockman. It's some other name, which is stupid because he should be Baxter Stockman because there's no... Because otherwise he's just some guy. And it's boring when he's just some guy. But if he was Baxter Stockman, then I'd have been like, oh, cool. But I don't care about him now, because he's not. Anyways, um, and then other than that, that's the main difference. The rest is just the uh, 90s Turtle movie, which is a better movie. So just watch that one if you want to actually watch a good movie. But if you want to just kind of have some fun with the movie, then check this one out. Because there's some really good uh, fun parts, uh, at least towards the end of the movie. I was kind of, like, it had a slower build-up than you think it would because it's focusing on April a lot and um, uh, Will Arnett's character, um, who was in the uh, 80s cartoon, but uh, he wasn't an important character in that, and he's an important character in this one, for whatever reason. You know, it's kind of dumb, because, like, Will Arnett is actually a great choice for that character. They just kind of changed the character to be more likable, and to then be actually helping the Turtles do things. Which isn't really necessary, because we could just have April do anything that he does, because he doesn't really add much to it. And if they had Casey Jones, then it'd be like, okay, yeah, you're worth you're, that's a character who would be worth having do things. Um, yeah, but he was fine. I guess he could have been funnier, but the script wasn't that great. And, like, they didn't write him to be an asshole as much as he is kind of, well, he's kind of a jerk. He's just kind of a jerk in the, um, anime show. But in, like, with Will Arnett, he can play an asshole really well. And that would have been really fun to see. But they gave him a different role for whatever reason, which was, I don't know, it was fine. I guess it, it was okay. Um, April O'Neil was actually really cool in this movie, except that she was played by Megan Fox, who's not a very talented actress. And so she can't really carry the role as much as someone else who would have been better. Um, the main thing I liked that they did with her, they had her, one, actually be relevant in the story, and two, they made her do things. In the 80s cartoon, it was really great to see April actually like helping the turtles defeat the bad guys all the time and stuff like that. And in this movie, she does that too. Um, what's okay? What's weird about the ending of this one? I have to mention this: is that it's exactly the same as the ending of the first Amazing Spider-Man. It's uncanny. Like the bad guy is like, "Oh, I have this toxin that's gonna infect the city," and he puts it on the thing. He puts there's on the on the tower thing on the top of a building. Then they have to go fight the bad guy on the top of the building, and then uh, the girl character has to go and get the cure and switch that out for the um, toxin so that nobody dies and gets infected and turns into lizards. It's like some people were like, "Oh, that's stupid." They just ripped off the Amazing Spider-Man, but I think it's just so weird that they clearly did. But it's like to such a unique degree, like. Every detail is pretty much the same. The tower thing even falls over at one point. 
I, and like it's weird. Like I was just like, why is this so similar? Like there's obviously a little differences here and there, but it's weird. Anyways, so April gets the cure from the thing, and so that is helpful. But then the other thing that's cool is when the tower part is falling over, the turtles and her are all hanging off the thing, and she actually kicks. I think she kicked, but she anyway she knocks the shredder off of the building, which is what kills him. That's awesome! I love that she did that, because normally they have, like, the Turtles or Splitter do that or something, but they had April do it. That's a, that's really cool. I really like that. I thought that was a good idea. Um, other than that, it's Megan Fox, so who cares? Um, the Turtles. The Turtles were really good. They were all really fun. Um, Leonardo was eh, but Donatello and Michelangelo were really, really cool. Michelangelo was incredibly funny. Donatello actually did some machine things, sort of, kind of, he was, like, he had stuff that was obviously scientific that he used, so that was, I think, a good point, because, and some of the other things, they've just been kind of there, but in this one, they played to what they were good at, Raphael was, was cool, like, he's my favorite turtle, so I'm gonna like him no matter what, but he could have been used a little bit more, like, in the 90s movie, they did him perfectly, I think. And he was, they, like, he was, like, the heart of that movie. Um, because that movie actually had heart, unlike this one. And that one, okay, so that one's a better movie. That's enough talking about that, because <laughs> I'm trying to talk about this movie. They could have done more with Raphael's character. Um, what I did with him, I liked, but I would have liked it no matter what. Anyways, Leonardo was kind of boring. Um, Splinter was cool when he was fighting stuff. That was a good idea. I liked that he used his tail to fight things. Um... Other than that, he didn't seem all that wise to me. Maybe just didn't have enough cool, wise, like, quotable lines. Or, I don't know, he didn't seem like he was all that wise in the Force. But, um, I don't know, he was fine. He was functional. The Shredder. The Shredder was basically a henchman of uh, William Fishner. I want to say it's William Fish. Is that the name? I forget. I can't remember. The scientist bad guy character. Um, and, like, he was basically just a henchman, which is okay, like, the boss battle that they had at the end, and yes, it's a boss battle, it's not like a fight in it, it's a boss battle, um, was actually really cool, I really liked it, because they did one thing from the comics that they never used for some reason in the 90s one, where they, even though they copied everything else exactly from the comics, but they didn't take this one idea, where the turtles are fighting the shredder, and they try fighting him one-on-one, -on -one and they, they lose, but then they team up on him, and beat him, and they did that in this movie, and it was cool. I really liked that part. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, Karai's in the movie. Okay, so also, um, the Foot Clan did guns, which was okay. It was kind of boring. I don't know. I, I think is that all, I, that's mostly all I have to say. Anyways, this movie was pretty okay as fun. The elevator scene was fantastic. That was incredible. Yeah. That, holy crap, that was a great scene. That was hilarious. And then, okay. There was a couple other parts that were pretty cool. That scene in particular was great. The turtles were fun. I really enjoyed the parts with them in it. There was a little too much focus on the humans. Shredder was, meh. He's okay. I didn't really care about April's story arc. I liked that she'd fight that she did things, um, so you can't really think too much about this movie, because it's not that good, and if you start, and it's not meant to be all that great either, it's just kind of meant to be for fun, and so if you think about it too much, you, it'll fall apart, Where, if, but some of the other movies, if you think about them, they actually are good, so when you think about it, but this one, if you think about it, it's like, oh wait, this movie's bad, so don't think about this movie when you're watching it, that's another thing. Um, I kind of spoiled it, but who cares, because it's, there's nothing really surprising in this one. Um, but yeah, it was pretty good, maybe check it out if you don't want to think, and maybe have a good time. Pizza, they had pizza. Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention, I was like, okay, this movie better have Charles eating pizza, Michelangelo saying Calabunga, and a cheesy, uh, rap about turtles in the end credits, which they did. Which was fantastic. They did all those things, including the cheesy rap in the credits, which was great. I loved it. Um, the other kind of cool idea that they had was playing around with the credits, because I like credits and things in movies, was they had it all comic book styled. The only, like, 
the thing that would have made it cooler is if it was more styled like the comics from, like, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics. And just comics in general they kind of used. Which works for something like Kick-Ass, but not this exactly. Because the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have, like, a specific, uh, what's the word? Tone? Uh, style. That's the that's the style. That's the word I just used. Okay, the the the, yeah, the TMNT comics have a specific style. Even in the newer comics, it still feels like a very similar style because they have a couple of the same. Well, they have one of the same guys working on it. But anyways, that style of comic looks different than the style they used in the movie, which is really nitpicky. But it's it doesn't feel the same. It should feel the same when you so when you show it as a comic. It like. Yeah, you can't just be, oh, look, because it's based on a comic. Look, comic. Comic life effects. Comic sans. We did it. It's a little, there's, you have to actually put some thought into it. Some of this stuff looked really cool. And actually, with the 3D, because I saw it in 3D, it, some of it looked really cool. But other than that, it was, it's, okay, I'm thinking about this movie too much. See? I should be like, oh, look, comics, that's cool. Uh, that's satisfying my brain. Now I'm going to go... Snort, snort some some marijuana. Subscribe.